Hi, I'm Hope Willard, and this video is an introduction to a letter exchanged between two religious women in 6th century Merovingian Gaul. It's one of my favorite texts for teaching about women's lives and monasticism in the early Middle Ages. Enjoy! This is an introduction to the letter of Caesarea of Arles to Radigand of Poitiers. This video aims to answer the following four questions. Question 1. Who were Caesarea and Radigant? Question 2. When was this letter written? Question 3. Why was this letter written? And question 4. What should I look out for when I'm reading this letter? Who was Caesarea of Arles? We don't actually know very much about Caesarea of Arles. Confusingly enough, the woman who preceded her as abbess of the monastery of Saint-Jean in Arles was also named Caesarea. So you might also see them referred to in articles as Caesarea the Elder and Caesarea the Younger. Caesarea was the author of two surviving letters, and she's also mentioned in or the recipient of three letters or documents, a general letter of advice from Bishop Caesarea of Arles, who you can see in the image, the prefatory letter to Caesarius's revised rule for nuns, and his final will. From the contextual evidence of the letters she wrote or received, she seems to have been active in the mid-6th century, but we don't actually know when she was born or when she died. Who was Radigand of Poitiers? Radigand is one of the best documented individuals of the early Middle Ages. She was a queen, a monastic founder, and a saint. So historians and bishops like Gregory of Tor wrote about her, and she was the subject of two biographies of her life by contemporaries who recognized her as a holy woman. She was born in around 520 in the Germanic kingdom of Thuringia, during her childhood, Thuringia was destroyed by the Franks, and Radigand was taken back to the Merovingian kingdoms as a captive. She later ended up marrying the Merovingian king Clothar I. Throughout her marriage, according to her hagiographic biographers, and indeed throughout her life, she had a strong attraction to monasticism and to religious practice. So eventually this led to her founding a monastery, becoming a nun, and living a life that led contemporaries to regard her as a saint. This letter seems to come from the mid-6th century when Radigand was just starting to set up her monastic foundation. And in early medieval monasteries, the community typically lived under what scholars now call a monastic rule, what in Latin is called a regula, a set of guidelines for their way of life. So this letter is a kind of covering document for that monastic rule being sent to Radigand and her community, and it also provides further guidance and suggestions for how to keep that rule effectively and live in community in a good way. When was this letter written? Because the letter seems to offer suggestions and support for a religious community that's just getting started, our best guess is that the letter was written during the 550s, which is when 
Radigand was establishing her monastery. What should I look out for when I'm reading this letter? One thing to pay attention to is the assumptions and expectations of literacy that Caesarea lays out in the letter for Radigand and the women of her community. A second thing to pay attention to in the letter, and make sure to read all the way to the end of the letter to see this, is Caesarea's assumptions and expectations about asceticism. Asceticism being the practice of extreme physical deprivation to promote self-discipline. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy reading the letter of Caesarea T. Radigant. Please do leave a comment on the video or contact me at my email address on the screen with any questions or suggestions. Take care.